Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. I interview the top fitness and movement professionals in the industry on their story on how they use movement as the access point to transform their client lives. Or like today's episode, we will be doing a series on how to reset during uncertain times, having solo conversations, you listening to me, about what you can do starting today to alter the trajectory of your life through fitness, mindset, and nutrition as the starting point. So thank you for joining me today. Summer is a beautiful time to enjoy spending time together with friends, with family, and really to enjoy the things that perhaps we don't allow ourselves to on our day-to-day basis, right? In the colder months or the shoulder months of summertime, right? But in the midst of a global pandemic, summer and our summer body bodies may look a little different than we are used to. Today's conversation is going to be about resetting, and this four-part series is about resetting and reframing the way that we are looking at our fitness, at our mindset, at our summer bodies, at maybe even the way that we will have been fueling ourselves and some of the habits that have kind of popped up during COVID-19. I'm sure that you, like everyone else, has seen the funny memes on social media talking about pandemic pounds, the COVID-19, or the quarantine 15 that people have been gaming, gaining during this uncertain time. I personally actually fundamentally don't like and have a huge issue with fat shaming or weight gain shaming because I think that it doesn't serve anybody to be motivated by social pressures. And I know for sure that we are all going through very different emotions during this time, that some people are struggling more than others, and that mostly we are all doing the best that we can. However, I know that people have been struggling. And if you are thinking about resetting, wanting to shift from a place of wanting to do better because you know better and not because you've seen these memes and you just want to feel better in your body, or if you're the type of person that has been asking, you know, I don't want to feel this way anymore. What can I do right now to start making a change? Or if like many of my clients who've been saying, how do I want to feel coming out of COVID-19? If this has been you, then this might be the conversation for you today. I just started a few weeks ago training my clients again outside of my home, actually, uh, and doing virtual fitness classes inside my online body project studio. This is a membership studio. It's a living, breathing membership where people join me either live five days a week doing uh, online workouts, or they are inside the membership studio where we do fitness workouts, where we do mindset modules, and when we have where we have monthly. Um, accountability ideas, as well as meal plans. Uh, I will post some details below wherever you're listening or watching this if you're interested in joining the online membership studio. But one of the things that we've been looking at and talking about is how can we reset to feel good now? And these little things that we do day after day, whether it's a workout showing up to your trainer, local trainer, or whether it's online in my membership studio, any structure like this will help you take a step forward, right? And at the time of this recording, we are 133 days into this global pandemic. And if you consider studies from the University of London, for example, they believe, they did research around habit forming. They used to believe it was 21 days to build a habit, but they're now finding that it actually ranges anywhere from 15 to 256 days to build a habit. The average of that is around 66 days to form a habit and solidify this habit in your life, right? And so if we consider that, then we have gone through basically two life cycles of habit forming throughout our pandemic time together, right? And, you know, one of the things that has been happening is that people are adopting 
bad habits. And because we are in this now over 133 days, they are solidifying these bad habits. And because most of us has, have been in this perpetual lockdown and shifting the ways that we, we've done things before, right? Whether it's now you're working from home or you're homeschooling, like I spoke about a lot in the beginning of this pandemic on this podcast, um, we are no longer in our regular routines, right? And it has made us kind of get into perhaps some bad habits that has perpetuated this kind of COVID-19 weight gain mentality, right? And especially remembering that being in this global pandemic, there has been a lot of fear and anxiety, a lot of overwhelm. People have been falling into patterns of uncertainty, right? And that we are looking for coping mechanisms as opposed to proactive ways of feeling good during these uncertain times right? Now, wherever you are, I believe that where you are is exactly where you should be. This conversation isn't about you being somewhere you're not, about what you should or shouldn't be doing, eating, moving, saying, right? This is not only a bit of a pep talk, but I'm hoping to give you some implementation and some practical ways of how you can shift this conversation for yourself in a productive, proactive way, right? I'm of the school of thought that we need to support each other in this unprecedented time. And my clients have been proactively coming to me, seeking guidance, accountability, support, right? And sometimes we have to lean into this way of this new normal, the current situation of this global pandemic. So let's talk about resetting. For me, resetting is about looking at where you are now in terms of your mood, in terms of how you've been feeling, and maybe how you've been eating. What attention have you been putting to yourself to self-care during this time, right? Oftentimes our habits change and they no longer include movement. They no longer include self-care, self-compassion. And really, These things kind of stagnate our biological processes, our metabolism, maybe our gut health, maybe our mindset processes, right? Which creates a cascade effect of negative emotions, sometimes fatigue, mood swings, food cravings, weight gain, or even difficulty in in losing weight if you find like you're kind of plateauing right? There is a plethora of things to consider over the next four weeks when we're talking about resetting. But for today, let's just start start about talking where you need to look at, how you can perhaps reset during this time. So if you're feeling that you're not at a good place in your body, if you're having a hard time focusing, if you've gained weight and you just don't feel comfortable in your clothes anymore, you may want to consider detoxing or resetting in a way that can, you know, support you and how you feel during the next little while, right? These conversations are not about taking on a huge change of taking on this massive meal plan, huge undertakings that is fundamentally going to stress you out more. This conversation is really today just about taking a baby step forward, finding what can you put in place and start practicing right now. So for me, before COVID, I was working crazy hours, juggling being a mom, carpooling my kids, training clients before my kids went to school, training clients when my kids were at school, and then hosting and producing this podcast. I had very many balls in the air uh, before March 16th. But when March 16th hit, when they declared a global pandemic here in Toronto, when they shut everything down, I shut down, shut down my fitness studio. And all of a sudden, I became a homeschooling mom. All of a sudden, I shifted my in-person fitness studio online to this membership studio. And I lost all my one-on-one training clients. There were so many things that shifted for me in that time. I was no longer moving the same way that I was before. Uh, I was no longer having any social interactions with people. I was extremely overwhelmed with homeschooling. I started drinking 
almost every single night. And I was the type of person, literally guys, that I would have a glass of wine every other week with dinner, you know, with a steak or whatever it was. So for me, I found that it was extremely un settling, right? I no longer had a routine. That was my routine before. My sleep was off. And if you had listened to our pod, my podcast during the first probably three or four weeks that this was going down, the, this pandemic, you know, I spoke about my sleep and how I wasn't sleeping nights on end, laying a week wake, right? And things got thrown off. My emotion were all over the place. I was crying because I was trying to homeschool my kids, trying to figure out what do I do with my business next, right? And I know that so many people struggled during, especially the start of this pandemic. And you need to remember, and I, I will speak about self-compassion a lot, and I've spoken about it during the last four months, because this is an unprecedented time. A lot of people were sad, angry, frustrated. And this time is extremely jarring emotionally, right? It is unlike anything else we have ever seen. Well, at least in my lifetime, right? And many of you watching, you're, you know, you, you're my tribe, you're my people. You're probably around the same age as me, probably in your early 30s, mid 30s, maybe in your 40s, like I am. And we've never seen anything like this, right? All of a sudden, we are no longer able to see the people that we love, no longer to be able to get out and do the things that we normally did, like grocery store shopping, has that you just show up and do it is now a thing of the past, right? And so if you're anything like me, you've been dealing a lot with so many different emotions. And even if you feel like, you know what, I'm okay, this is my jam, being alone, it is undeniable that a global pandemic amps up the stress. The global stress level is heightened and therefore energetically, we are all feeling it at some level, right? So now four months into it, I personally still have a few bad habits. You know, I've still been making baking more than ever in my house. I've been drinking more than ever in my life. And this impacts so many things. So, you know, part of this conversation that I'm sharing with you is really an offering to myself. And it's a symbiotic give and take relationship with me and my clients, with me and you as my audience to look at what can we do starting today? to look at our routines, to reset our routines. So let me ask you, do you have a routine? I know that for me, I have been holding my routine super sacred for probably the last two, three months now. The first month for sure, it was a complete shit show. I was all over the place to say the least, right? And my school, my kids are at home. And this doesn't necessarily always apply to parents that have kids at home. This is, you know, for all of us that we're working and now working from home, that maybe we don't have a job now, that now it's just completely shifted, right? But I do believe that holding a routine that is sacred is super important. For me, um, yes, okay, granted, I have kids that kind of demanded me to be in a bit of a routine because they were doing online learning, distance learning. And so that for sure made me show up in the mornings for them and that. But there are numerous studies over the years that have looked at how routines are so vital, right? For productivity in corporate structures, just in optimizing your health and well-being, right? Not having a routine can increase your stress level. It can lead to poor eating, poor sleeping, as well as because when you don't have a schedule, you don't have any control. Some people feel completely out of control. Now, the disclaimer is that if you are feeling great during this unprecedented time and that no routine and no schedule is actually serving you and your mood and your eating and your well-being really super well, then this conversation really isn't for you. But the majority of people, when they throw routine and schedule out of the window, they start feeling like crap. This is where you're seeing that COVID-19 showing up because you're 
eating irregularly. The fridge is right there. Your emotions are up and down. Therefore, if you have this tendency to you know, manage your emotions with food, with which I do, baked goods is my kind of go-to, then you're going to be all over the place, right? And then this is when you fall into that negative self-talk, negative belief, negative self-sabotage, and it becomes this vicious cycle, right? And so if this is you, routine is a really great place to start. This is like your foundation, the ground zero, right? For me, routines are kind of like creating a work day parameter, the structures and the parameters that we can show up and flourish within. It's kind of like Parkinson's law that I've spoken about many times, right? Parkinson's law says that work expands to the time that is allotted to complete it, right? And so this works both ways. Now, without any boundaries of sleep or work, right? It kind of, that extra time and that um, Parkinson law works the same way. You fill it up with the tasks of like Netflix and chilling or eating or baking and it kind of goes right out the window and well-being sometimes follows right out the window with that, right? So here's step one to reclaiming your routine and resetting your routines right now. So I want you to track what you're doing over the next five days when you go to sleep at night and when you wake up uh, and when you wake up day after day and looking at your routine of when are you eating now? Is it completely all over the place? When are you getting outside for some fresh air connecting with nature? When are you logging on to work, right? Are you now because you just need to log on to Zoom and you don't have to wear any pants? Are you waking up five minutes before a Zoom meeting at work, right? Or are your kids sleeping all day and you're like, oh, forget it. Let them do whatever they want, right? So check in. This is not a bad or good, right or wrong. Just take an audit of what does your day look like, okay? So I believe that if you have a routine, it definitely allows you to start controlling and not from a place of like control freak, but kind of controlling what your day looks like, especially if you're the type of person that struggles with anxiety or overwhelm. Routine can absolutely anchor you in a predictable pattern that supports your mental well-being right? And next week we will talk about movement, but this also allows you to flourish within a routine, a schedule that makes you feel empowered in what you're going to do day after day. Let me give you a little example, a little bit, I'm not a great storyteller, but a bit of a story of my routines and habits and how they allow me to kind of thrive right down, right now. So my daily routine really includes looking at when I wake up, having a set time to wake up, as well as going to bed, right? Because it allows me, when I know I have a scheduled downtime, it allows me to flourish in my day. And so for me, I go to sleep around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, and I need for me to get a good amount of sleep, I need six to seven hours consistently of good sleep. And so a routine of going to bed at a certain time and allowing myself good sleep, which we'll talk about sleep in a couple weeks, about resetting also, it allows me to have good rest and recovery over the night so that I can wake up at a set time every day. So my wake up time typically is at 5 a.m., 5.30 around so that I can wake up and start the day on my agenda meaning that nobody's dictating what I'm doing first thing in the morning. Nobody, yes, I have children, but I wake up before they get up. And so I get a say of how my day starts. And typically my day starts with a morning meditation, with morning journaling, and then I get to set the tone for my day. It then follows uh, with either a workout for myself, or if now I have clients back at 6 a.m., 6.30, I am prepping for them to get inside my online studio or outside on my outdoor in-person studio, 
right? And that kind of sets the tone for my day, right? And like I was saying, I, I have a nighttime ritual or routine that allows me to wind down from the day, right? I usually journal or I'm reading without screens before I go to bed so that I can decompress and detox, digitally detox before I go to sleep, right? I know that, you know, making a day predictable might seem insignificant to you, especially because it is the summer. But I promise you, if you can get into kind of a schedule, into some kind of routine, it will really allow you to thrive during this time. And it's not a complete shift right now, but it's how can you add in one thing today that can support you tomorrow? I am a really big believer in baby steps and about practicing, right? Practicing is fundamentally what will get you into those patterns, into those habits that every day that you're dropping into the bucket and saying, okay, I'm going to try to do this better today and tomorrow and the next day, all of a sudden you are 66 days or more into a process, <coughs> excuse me, into a pattern, into a habit that allows you to thrive. And then it'll answer your question that we spoke about in the beginning of this episode, how do you want to feel coming out of COVID-19? And I promise you, if you start practicing these things today, if you start resetting, if you start detoxing, if you start doing these little, little things, it will add up. It is that cumulative effect, right? That all of a sudden you are leaner, you are tighter, you're feeling good, your mood is shifting, your emotions are elevated, your hydration is good, your sleep is improving, right? So I'm going to talk to you about step two in one second, right? And so, like I said, I know it is the summer, right? But we can start practicing these things continuously to support our structures of well-being and health, even during an unprecedented time. So let's talk, talk about how you can now, having the clarity of looking at what your chaos has been or the routines that you've kind of been living into over the last 133 days, what are you currently doing? And then you can get a sense of what is serving you and what is not serving you, right? So like I said, make sure to include things like when you wake up in the morning, what time are you going to bed? What is your first meal? What are you first doing when you're getting out of bed? Are you grabbing your phone? I don't even know where my phone, grabbing your phone and scrolling through Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever it is. Are you already on Netflix, ready to chill right out of bed to go back to bed, right? And look at what kind of time are you carving out for yourself? right? Even if you have kids, even if you don't have kids and you're right at work, what time are you carving out yourself to insert that self-compassion, that self-love, that self-care, right? That we so need not only all the time, but especially during this time, right? So once you get a lay of the land of what your current routine is or non-routine exists, even if it is all over the place, it allows you to step back and take a look at what is important. What are the non-negotiables of what you're already doing? Like if it is that you're doing a morning coffee with your partner for five minutes every day that now you've been able to do that with COVID, you know, hold those things sacred, right? Those are the things that are allowing us to get through day to day, right? So take a look at what are those things that are important to you? What are the things you've been enjoying? And then look at what things are still important to you that you have not been including, right? What are the things that you used to really enjoy that you wish that you hadn't given up, right? And then you can take a look at what has been lending itself to things that are maybe really disruptive for you, that are really anxiety provoking, that are really throwing off your schedule in a way that you never really realized, right? This is a really good opportunity to pause and look at what we've been doing. Good. Then for here, from here, I want you to write down what is really the goal for you to come out of COVID feeling like right? And really, we've spoken about this before, but when you tap into the emotions of what it feels like to feel good in your body, what does it look like? And for all of us, it's different, right? For me, routine is part of it. For me, it's about having that sacred space to meditate. For me, it's about 
creating some breathing room for my family, for my self-care, right? And I want you to write this down. And this could be simple things like sleep, right? If you've been Netflix and chilling till 2 a.m. and then you have to get up for a morning meeting with your work call is at 7.30 a.m., look at what is going to support you right now, right? And then you can start establishing what are the parameters for you. And if you'd like, I'm going to set, uh, put on this page uh, where the podcast lives on my blog of an easy way that you can start tracking this and looking at asking the questions of what serves you. I'll actually share with you what I use inside my body, my project you, this is my online program, my six week online program. So I'll share with you actually right on, on this blog page so that you can take a look at that and see if that serves you. Right. And so take a look at how many hours of sleep do you need that really works for you? You know, it may be six and a half hours like me. It may be 10. I have a friend of mine, she needs 10 hours of sleep in order to function, right? And then you can reverse engineer these things. And I know there's a lot of flexibility right now because it is summer and things are changing or some of us are getting back to physically work, right? In person. So, you know, just be gentle, but look at what can you do starting today, right? And what can you do on weekends that'll serve you during the week? right? Like I know that establishing a morning routine is really good. Sleep times are really effective, but maybe for you it's meal planning so that you know when you're on the go now that you're back in the office, that you have consistent meals to nourish you throughout your day, right? A breakfast shake maybe, uh, a really good protein-based meal for lunch that's going to absolutely support you from a mindset perspective, from a weight maintenance or uh, weight loss perspective, right? From an emotional perspective, because everything is interconnected. It's a symbiotic relationship. And, you know, I always speak about this, but I believe that how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you start doing these little things to support you, it will flourish and it, it will infiltrate all aspects of your life. So I hope that was helpful. Step one, take an audit and uh, an inventory of what you're doing right now in your routines. Step two, see what is important to you to shift, to add in, to keep in, and to take out. Step three, start creating a routine that will support you. Maybe it's a regular sleeping time, regular waking time, some breathing time for you to add in some self-care. Make sure you join us next week when we're going to talk about movement and how you can start implementing fitness and why fitness is an important conversation to shifting your entire life, how it'll serve you, serve your routine, serve your mindset, serve your best life right now. And if you are looking for a way to reset, to detox, to get into a routine, make sure you sign up for our seven day green shake challenge. This is a seven day challenge that allows you to test yourself, to get into a routine, to nourish your body that will really serve you from the inside out. I share with you some of my best recipes of my green shakes that my clients love. They are cult worthy. So I invite you to try that. You can get them, you can sign up at www.katherinetanaka.com slash green shake challenge. As always, I appreciate you tuning in week after, after week on this podcast. And if you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're watching, listening to this. Uh, it really allows me to get a pulse on what I am doing well, and it allows me to be in conversations with you. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a beautiful day, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.